Okay, so just finished packing up my stuff um, at Evian. Missed the cut, which is a little bit upsetting. Um, yeah, just feel just feel sad to be honest. Um, and did a lot of good stuff this week, which I think is why it why it hurts a little bit. Managed to get a flight home tonight because I could have stayed to practice here, but to be honest, sometimes you just want to get out of the place that's brought you a little bit of sadness and getting home means hopefully I can see my coach tomorrow before I then head up to Scotland. So disappointing week, but I'll, uh, I'll get over it and, and move on. Unfortunately for Megan, this was the start of a slump that had her miss four of the next five cuts. It's been hard not to think about the fact that I've missed a few cuts in a row, but I think maybe knowing that this particular run of events has come to an end, you know, it's been a, a big four weeks and I haven't obviously got what I wanted to out of it. And part of my brain is going, this is the last chance to kind of show again some of the best players in the world what I can do or where I think I'm capable of being. Um, but I also know that's not a very good way to look at golf and you don't want to get caught up in the results because that's kind of not conducive to your best performance so just trying to find a way to get back into the process and, and trust the things that I'm doing because I know I have been doing a lot of good stuff. I'm good, thank you. Good to see you. I'm good, how are you? You've got to get me a boogie. My coach, <laughs> Hello, Nicholas. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Nicholas. Hi, I'm Nicholas. We're teeing off the 11th, playing the back eight holes. Okay. Morning, uh, Shane Rose, I'm Megan McLaren's swing coach. Have worked with Megan now since, uh, since she finished college in America, which is probably now eight years ago, uh, nine years ago. Um, mostly looking after a swing, anything from tee to green. I don't know, just don't quite feel in sync, I guess. Just like the first one, just like a little bit flipping over. Megan works tirelessly on her game. She's always um, trying to improve everything she does. To tell Megan to have a week off would, is almost an impossibility. How many did you take off the red? Five. Yeah, okay. Each year she gets better and better. Um, more recently working on a lot of strength to get more distance in a, in a game, uh, something that's, that's really beginning to help, beginning to shine. But Megan's strong point is definitely from 50 to 120 yards. She is ridiculously good at that. I wouldn't want to play a player for money from between 50 and 120 yards. See, that's, a, that's a strong part. And if you've got great work ethic and talent, you've got a beast of a golfer, and that's what she is. Last time I saw Shane, we had a bet because it was Newcastle Chelsea that weekend. So he's finally paying up. Chelsea fan playing out to a two, not happy man. He heard that, didn't he? <laughs> with a break in the LET schedule, I had the pleasure to discuss the state of women's golf with Megan and two other professional golfers, Becky Brewerton and Rosie Davies. What do you think is a common misconception of players on the LET? I think people don't realise how good we are. We've all played in the States at different times, I think. And there is still more depth over there, but it's been so evident the last couple of years that the standard is going up and up on our tour. There's girls who are now in the top 30 or 40 in the world rankings just from playing on the LET. Atia Titical was the yeah. number one on the LET last year, got to number one in the world this year. Like stuff like that wouldn't have been possible five years ago. Yeah. I would challenge our tour to document the stories of the players. I think there's so much more that we could be showcasing. Mm -hmm. The talent and some of some of the people's stories are just incredible. Mm. Yes. Why do you think there hasn't been as much investment in the women's game? I don't think it's a case of looking at it, why hasn't there been as much? There, there has been a lot more. I think you could put a positive spin on that. I don't think we're being like completely neglected. I mean, for sure it's, it's improving. Um, I like to use women's football as a sort of comparative as I think they're pushing forward in a way that we women's golf would like to do mm -hmm. and I think it shows that if you showcase 
the best players in a sport and they have a stage to play on where people are able to watch, you'll quickly see that the interest is there. We now join Megan at her final stop of the LET season, the Andalusia Costa del Sol Open de España. Finding new life in her final month of play, Megan didn't miss a single cut in her three remaining tournaments. The highlight being narrowly missing a win after a playoff at the Lacoste Ladies Open de France. So, the LET season will come to a conclusion here. How are you feeling? Good, yeah. It's, um, it's obviously nice to still have one event to play. Um, I feel like the last couple of months I haven't really played that much. You know, it's slowed down a little bit, so it's nice just to have like one more opportunity, you know. Where is your head at looking ahead from here? Um, I mean, honestly, it's a cliche answer, but like right now I'm like, I'm here, I'm in this week and I just want to play well and kind of get all my preparation done. But when I'm actually just at a tournament and I can concentrate on like the things that I enjoy about trying to be ready for, for a tournament, that's kind of when I feel at my best and at my most content. I'm going to touch wood so that we don't <laughs> jinx it. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Has your perception changed on what you want people to see and feel when they watch this? Has that changed from when we spoke in Germany, from uh, the year that you've had? My sort of perspective is always the same when it comes to people's kind of opinions of women's golf is I just hope that they can consume it a bit more and really kind of realise what they're missing out on if they're not kind of paying attention at the moment. So I hope people kind of come along and watch events if they can and realise that they might be watching the future world number one. Like, that's already happened. So I think things like that are really cool and a great opportunity for this tour to stand on its own two feet as well. With the conclusion of the 2022 LET season and a top 10 finish on the order of merit, Megan will soon look towards the LPGA Q series, of which she has earned exemption. The journey for Megan continues west in the United States. And now a preview of episode three. I think the jet lag's fading day by day. There's days you play with somebody and you're like, okay, that's just like, I don't understand how that person's doing that. Can I just have one of these birdies that you're making? Sometimes it's just like, it's not even the numbers or the stuff like that. Sometimes it's just, being there for someone because you care. I hope you're okay, much good luck. Um, love you so much, Joe. Oh. Sorry, life is hard, but I promise that you'll get through everything, no matter what. Actually, love you, miss you. Oh, my <laughs> <laughs>